Hello everyone and welcome back to my monthly review. Now in the script it says uh, this was going to come out on time in February. It's August. Uh, if that isn't an indicator of how inconsistently I post, I don't know what is. Anyways, just like last time, I'll be going through some of the different media I consumed during December and January. I'll give a brief synopsis of the plot before going over what I liked, disliked, my personal thoughts, and whether or not I'd recommend it. I also completely forgot to mention that there are going to be some huge spoilers as I'm going in-depth about specific scenes and events that spoil different parts. I also completely forgot to mention that in my last video, so I should mention it now, right? Uh, and I'll leave three timestamps this time for the synopsis, review itself, and my recommendation. Also, as the title suggests, I'll be actually splitting this into three videos, with this video going over the book I read, and the other two videos going over the movies and podcasts. Now with that out of the way, let's get on to the reviews, but first, a wardrobe change. This month's book review was The Reckoner's Book 1, Steelheart. Steelheart follows David Charleston, a young man filled with hatred and vengeance for the superpowered humans called Epics, with his main goal being to kill all Epics. However, his main target is the titular Steelheart, with Steelheart having killed his father when he was only a young boy. In order to accomplish this goal, David has spent nearly his entire life collecting information about epics in order to figure out their weaknesses and end their lives. In order to further this goal and get close to Steelheart, David works his way into the ranks of the Reckoners, a shadowy group of vigilante assassins that have been covertly taking down low-level epics. However, after coming into contact with New Cargo's top Reckoner, Prof, David manages to persuade him into turning his sights toward dismantling Steelheart's regime and killing Steelheart once and for all. So what did I like? Well, for starters, I absolutely love the book setting of New Cargo, as whilst the name of the city is a little bit corny, the city itself is marvellous, being described as one formed entirely out of steel with a vague speakeasy aesthetic. I also love that the city itself highlights the power scale of epics, one such being an epic called Night Wielder, who has covered the entire city in a state of eternal darkness. And honestly, it makes humans seem just so insignificant when compared to the godlike epics. For the most part, all of the characters are fairly well written and likeable, with my personal favourites being Abraham, Cody, and Prof. The power system of epics is also quite interesting and provides a unique take on superhero abilities, with the weakness aspect providing an even more unique depth to the system as it aids in leveling the playing field. The entire story also provides a very unique take on realistic superheroes, which have begun to crop up recently with movies like Hancock and Brightburn, and most popularly in one of my personal favourite TV shows, The Boys. However, what makes this book unique is, unlike The Boys, which is easily one of the best depictions of realistic superheroes, but has an inherent cynicism and darkness to it, Steelheart maintains the same sort of whimsy seen in superhero movies, but cleverly turns it on its head by bringing a certain level of darkness that keeps the audience engaged. I also absolutely adore David's metaphors. Hell, I even made a whole meme regarding this aspect of his character. Now, initially, they took me a bit off guard, and I thought their sole purpose was to highlight his social awkwardness. However, as the book went on, they brought a certain charm to his character and helped to increase his likability. Also, the twists in this book were genuinely genius, and I did not see them coming. Major spoilers ahead. I did not expect Megan to die, as I was fully expecting her to barely scrape by. However, looking back at this moment, it was actually very important for David's character, since it forced him to witness just how high the stakes were for his new life, and also just how severe the consequences of his improvisation could be. As such, it was shocking when it was revealed that Megan was not only alive and also an epic, but is also the epic masquerading as Steelheart's lieutenant, Fire Force. Whilst there were some hints to this, this was an earth-shattering revelation that was compounded even further with the second reveal. The reveal of Prof being an epic was genuinely shocking, and was not one I saw coming. Both of these reveals were also key to setting up book two, as it forces David to come to terms with the reality that there are good epics, making him question his resolve to wipe out all epics. The ending was also great and brilliantly symbolic. Although I did have a hunch that Steelheart's weakness had to do with not fearing him, the method of checkmating him was an absolutely brilliant stroke of genius on Sanderson's side. 
There were only really two things I didn't like about Steelheart, with the first being David and Megan's relationship. Whilst in the long run, this relationship will probably be important as David falls in love with an epic, their romance seemed a bit forced at times, and their chemistry was a bit mediocre. Despite this, I did enjoy their interactions and friendships, although their romance felt more like a necessity to fulfil the story's themes rather than genuine love. My second problem was David and Prof's stubbornness. Now, of course, every character must have some flaw unless you want to write a Gary or Mary stew. That being said, the level of stubbornness that David and Prof displayed throughout the book could be genuinely infuriating. Now, I've actually finished the entire series, except for Mitosis, and I plan on doing some videos in the future ranking the book's characters and epics, as well as some tier list videos. But after finishing this book, it's made me really excited to read the rest of Brandon Sanderson's writing, especially Mistborn and the Stormlight Archive. And once I do, I'll make sure to make a video giving my thoughts. Overall, I really enjoyed this book, as it was a light and fun read with interesting themes and likeable characters. I'd definitely recommend this book to anyone who's a fan of anti or dark superhero stories like The Boys and Invincible, as whilst it may not get as dark as those other stories, it still provides a nuanced and unique take on the subgenre. I hope you all enjoyed this August book review, and once again, I am so sorry for the late post. I really did want to post this around July and have my whole schedule planned out, but due to procrastination and poor organisation mainly, I never got around to it. As for the other podcasts and movie reviews, I'm not sure when they'll be out, but know they'll be out around October to November. Apart from that, I'll try to post another video, potentially part one of my Man in the Black Suit narration, but I can't really speak with any certainty. Getting away from that, I'm shocked that I've nearly hit 100 followers on my Instagram page, and the support genuinely means so much to me, as it's a lot easier to post on there, and it allows me to share my art, as well as post many updates regarding said art, as well as my writing or videos. If you haven't already, consider giving me a follow on Instagram, Kara, or TikTok, where I actually post semi-regularly. Although, after finishing some of my other pieces, I'll probably go radio silent around October with university work. Speaking of which, I'm proud to announce that I have finally finished draft one of my novella, and I plan on making a video soon providing the name, a brief synopsis of the plot, as well as information regarding other books going forward as well as beta reading opportunities when I've finished editing. Now, I'll try to get this out within the next couple of weeks before my assessments ramp up, but if not, I probably won't post this until around November. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day and night. Stay healthy, stay safe, and remember to stock up on apples, lest you want to visit from the doctor who's coming to test Compound V on you. Bye!